and welcome to another Watercolour Wednesday with me, Rebecca Jarman. In this week's tutorial, we're going to be painting this bee on a sunflower using the salt resist technique to create texture and a lot of wet in wet painting too. And also included in today's free tutorial, you have a PDF download of the reference image. So without further delay, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do in preparation for this class is to print off your um, image, the photo reference that I've actually popped in the description box below this video. Download and print that off at home and then you'll be ready to create your transfer. And um, you scribble on the back with a graphite pencil, nice and dark. Place the reference image over the top of your watercolour paper and trace it through using a pencil. I've actually got a video of how to do that technique. You'll also find that in the description box below if you're unsure as to how to do it. Um, so I have traced the outline of my B and also just a guideline as to where the curve of the sunflower is. So that curve here. So it's quite a simple basic outline drawing. I've not included details on the wings. Um, we're going to sort of freehand those. And um, you want to secure your watercolour paper to a board using masking tape. Secure all four sides and that will help prevent a little bit of the cockling. Um, I haven't pre-stretched the paper so it may well buckle a little bit. The more water you use in a painting, the more the paper can stretch. So um, yeah, so I've taped it down and it's secured nicely and hopefully that will help prevent a little bit of that stretching happening. The colours that you're going to need today are lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, Payne's grey and ultramarine blue. You're also going to need a little bit of table salt as well because we're going to use the salt resist technique to create some texture. You're going to need um, a palette with your paints, selection of brushes. Um, I'm using uh, round brushes and you will want a selection of sort of large going down to a detail. This one's a number two here. I've got a four, um, an eight and also a ten. I also have a really large number 18, so I use that for wetting the paper when I use the wet in wet technique, which we're going to do. Um, you want to have two pots of water, one for washing your brush, one that always stays clean that we use to mix the paints with. Um, and have yourself a scrap of watercolour paper as well, um, so we can test the colours, make sure they're correct before we put it onto our painting. So let's get started. So firstly, I'll describe what we're going to do. So we're going to use the wet and wet technique today um, and we're also going to use the salt resist technique as well. Um, now, I've got two videos, one um, about creating textures and things. So that will have the salt resist technique in there if you want to have a little look at that first of all and have a practice go. And um, last week we used the wet in wet technique to create a colourful zebra. So the links to those videos, again, you'll find them below in the description box. So check those out. Um, so we're going to start off by creating a nice wash to fill the background. Um, so that's painting the sunflower. We're going to use the lemon yellow and we're going to mix a little bit of a pale green as well using the ultramarine blue. Um, and then we're going to use the salt to resist technique on the main body of the sunflower because there's lots of lovely textures and shadows and things in there. And we're also going to use the wet and wet technique across the bumblebee to keep him nice and fuzzy. And then we'll use the wet on dry technique to create the sharp lines that we see in his wings. So that's the plan for today. So get all your materials ready and we'll get started. So firstly, you want to transfer some water into your palette. And I've just got two spots there. And I'm going to begin by mixing... Um, the lemon yellow. So I've already activated my paints a little bit by popping a spot of water in those paints and so that begins to activate it. 
in the palette before I started recording the video. So I've got lemon yellow here just on its own. I'm picking up quite a lot of paint there. And we want to make sure we've got enough paint here to cover the um, petals of the sunflower. So, um, and we'll test it on the piece of paper, make sure it's actually um, a good consistency and a nice strength of colour because you don't want it to be too pale. We are going to use, we are going to wet the paper first, so that's going to water down this colour a little bit, so it'll make it a bit paler. So ensure that you pick up enough pigment so that it doesn't dry too pale in the end. So I've just added a bit more pigment there and it strengthened that nice yellow colour for me. So that's nice and bright and crisp that yellow. We're also going to be using cadmium yellow for the centre of the um, flower. And that's a nice sort of warm, that's my warm yellow that I'll be using. Next, I want to pre-mix a little bit of green um, for the petals. In between the petals, we've got some green showing through on the reference image. So I'm going to start off actually with some of the cadmium yellow in this little spot on my palette. And then I'm going to go in and pick up some ultramarine blue. Now it only takes a little bit of blue to change that yellow very quickly because obviously the blue is a stronger colour. And you can see there that it's got, I've already created just with one little spot of blue, it's changed that yellow immediately and given me a nice green. Now actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to strengthen it a little bit by adding more yellow. I want it to be a slightly thicker consistency, so I'm going to go a bit more yellow there um, as it's going to be wet in wet, and like I say, it's going to dry, um, dry paler than what it is here on our tester strip. So I'm going to just make it slightly darker than I want it so that when it is um, dry on my painting, it will be dark enough in the end. So yes, I'm happy with that. So we've got a mixture of green and we've also got the lemon yellow in our palette. Clean off your brush and what I'm going to do now is take my large number 18 brush. I'm going to wet that with clean water and I'm going to go around the wing. We don't want to wet inside the the wing at all so just be careful here and just wetting up to the edge of the inner circle and I'm going to wet this top corner just to about here okay you don't want great puddles but you do want it to be nice and damp so that the paint will um, spread nicely across the surface so if you look from a dis uh, from an angle should I say you should see a nice soft sheen on the surface of the paper and now I'm going to take um, my number 10 brush I'm going to wet the bristles a little bit and I'm going to pick up some yellow and I'm going to paint lines because obviously the petals are linear so I'm going to paint in that direction the direction that the petals are on the photograph on the reference image so I'm going to fill in that space and it's nice and soft because I've pre-wet the paper and I'm going to take a second brush this is my number eight brush it's slightly damp and I'm going to pick up a little bit of green and just let some of that green flow into the yellow that I've popped down and because it's wet in wet it's blending nicely it's giving a nice soft um, blend of colours on the surface and we're not having to do much to create that so that's the beauty of wet in wet so I wet down to about this section here so now I'm going to pick up my wetting brush again and I'm going to take water a bit further down in fact I'm going to do the whole of the right corner now the bottom right 
and I'm going to go back to my yellow brush, pick up that paint, just going to add a bit more water to it, mix a tiny bit more. So um, you can see I'm using these strokes from the centre of the flower out and I'm allowing it to go off the edge of the paper as well. Um, because you want it to definitely reach those edges. You don't want it to suddenly stop. And I'm following that arc around the centre of the flower. And I'm picking up a bit more paint as well. You know, if you've not mixed enough, just pick up a bit more paint on your brush. Um, remember, it's nice and damp, so you've got time to do that. It, it allows you that time to to go back to your palette and add more. So I'm just going, this is still damp at the top, I'm just going in with some more yellow to create some slightly darker sections while it's still damp. If it's dry, you don't want to do that because you'll end up with hard lines, not these soft shapes. So once it's dry, <clears throat> excuse me, don't go back in once the paper's dry, okay? Don't be tempted to do that. Now, I'm coming back down and I'm picking up some more green and I'm just going to drag my brush. I'm not putting on too much pressure um, on that green. I'm just using the very tip of my brush and I'm dragging the brush in from the edge towards the centre, but none of these green lines are going to touch the centre of the flower. If you look at the reference image, they sort of come part way in, so um, I'm not going to take it all the way to the centre, I'm just dragging it, and you want to be using the same directional strokes as you did for the petals. Um, just thickening some of those green lines towards the edge, the outer edge. And you get this beautiful, really soft background, um, which is lovely. So that's beginning to dry now. I've just got enough time to add a little bit more darker yellow here, here and there, just to add a little bit of depth, a little bit of... Um, yeah, depth to, to, the, to the wash so that it's not flat. You can see that there are some stripes in there, a little bit of definition and if you like a bit of shadow as well. So that is the right section but if I bring back the reference image you can see that we need to do this top left section as well and we're going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit more of my yellow on the palette and I've still got plenty of green but actually this section here is a lot more yellow there's hardly any green in it so we're okay um, so first of all wetting that section being really careful now not to go into the B not to disturb the B at all um, so just being careful where I pop my water down following the outer edge of the bee's wing there and bringing it down the front. Okay, picking up my yellow brush and this time the petals are in that sort of direction. They come around um, towards the left. So I'm just first of all going to pop some lines down just to remind me of the directional strokes and then I'm going to fill in around the B, dragging the paint out to the edge. And there's a little section here which I'm just going to fill in now on the dry paper. So that's a tiny little section around the little um, the antenna bit that's popping out the, the front of his head there. So I've just filled in this small shape here. 
just there on my painting. Okay, and now we need to allow this to dry uh, before we move on. So I'll catch you in a second. Okay, so that's drying off nicely and it's actually, um, if I tilt it to the camera, I don't know if you can see, but it has um, buckled a little bit because that area was very wet and of course this area is very dry. So we've got a bit of um, an arc going on, but that's okay. It's not going to affect my painting at the moment, so that's fine. So if you, if you find that because you've used a lot of water, you start getting little peaks and troughs happening, don't panic, it's all right. We can still continue. Now, um, so what we're going to tackle next is the salt resist in the centre. So we want to create these lovely textural effects using the salt. So we, we're we going to use, again, the wet and wet technique with two colours simultaneously, a little bit like we did on the petals. But this time we're going to use um, cadmium yellow. I'm just going to add a couple of drops to that. Um, that lemon yellow there. I'm just going to mix my yellow in that section. So this time it's cadmium yellow, so you can see it's much warmer, much more rich in colour. It's like a yolky yellow, I like to call it. Um, so you want a lovely strength of yellow. So you can see there that's really, really nice and yolky. Um, so that's the one colour we're going to use. We're also going to mix um, a second colour for this in a new area on my palette. And this time using some burnt sienna. There we go. Because we want to create the shadowy areas as well within this. So the burnt sienna there. And... I'm just going to pick up a bit more pigment because it looks dark on the palette, but let's give it a test. It always looks lighter once you paint it onto the paper. So you can see there, it's it's a nice light brown. Um, so I'm going to darken it up a touch by adding a bit more of that burnt sienna. Okay, and thickening it up. And again, remember, I'm going to wet the paper first, so the colour is going to be a bit lighter than this. And you must have a little bit of table salt at the ready for this next step. Okay, so um, I'm just testing. Yep, the paper is dry to the touch. So that yellow background, the petals are dry enough for me to continue. And um, we're going to work our way around this centre of the flower and do little patches at a time. So first of all, getting my big brush with just clean water and I'm going to start on the left and wet the centre of the flower just down this bottom left half again be really careful around the bee itself especially the wings you don't want to disturb that lovely sharp edge of the wing so I've just wet up to his um, leg here that's sticking out below his wing so that's wet I'm going to actually just spread the water a little bit because that's puddled up a bit I don't want too much water so I've just taken some water off um, now I'm going to use my number eight brush picking up some of the cadmium yellow mix and I'm dotting it down and see how it wants to spread into that water. That's lovely, lovely, soft, fluffy edges. I'm going to paint up to the wing and then just dot down some more of this yellow and see how it spreads beautifully. Now, at the same time, I'm going to pick up some of my brown. So this is my number four brush I'm using here. I'm just going to dot down some brown into that yellow and it should want to mix, blend on the surface. Okay. That's nice. 
Okay, so um, now you want to, while, at this stage, while it's wet, pick up a few grains of salt, pinch a little bit in between your finger and thumb, and then you want to, from a little height, just sprinkle down that salt onto the surface. You can see where it lands because um, it soaks up some of the paint immediately, so it creates these little dark specks on the surface of your painting. So you'll be able to see where it's landing. Um, I've not used all of that. I've got rid of the excess salt that I didn't use. And now I'm going to come round and do the second half of the centre of the sunflower. In fact, I might just pop down a tiny bit more salt but you'll see it takes a few minutes to work you'll see it starting to work as it dries now so what I'm going to do same again guys back into the water clean water remember use your clean water <laughs> and I'm wetting that section up to where I've just painted remember just go around his little leg there and dragging that paint across the surface. Remember, just be careful across the edges. And I've painted up to the edge where the petals start. Now, um, yellow paint first, dotting it down, bringing it up to the edges of the bee so I'm going to come up to the edges first making sure they're completely covered Down. I'm just going to pop a bit more paint over on the left here because I've noticed there's a few white um, areas that I'd left. Um, so while I had my yellow on my brush, I just popped that on. So I'm wetting and painting up to the edge. Now I'm picking up some of the brown, dotting it in. So it's quite dark on this right hand side. So I'm going to bring that brown all the way down that line of the centre, the centre where it meets the petals. And I'm going to add quite a bit of brown in there. That This is the burnt sienna, of course. I'm just dotting it on and allowing it to blend on the surface nicely with the yellow. Um, I don't want any uh, dry patches, so if you've missed anywhere... Just go back to your yellow and pop some more yellow down if there's any white areas. So I'm popping a bit more yellow down. And it's nice and wet. It's blending nicely with the yellow, isn't it? That brown is merging on the surface. So that's giving us some texture anyway, this wet in wet technique. But now we're going to go back up to the salt. Pick up a pinch of salt and again from a small height, just sprinkling down onto the surface. With the salt. Um, now you can concentrate the salt in certain areas if you wanted to or you can kind of do an even distribution it's entirely up to you wherever the salt lands it's going to gather it's going to absorb paint that's around it and that's how this technique works it soaks up some of that paint then when it's dry and we remove the salt it leaves little patches of sort of um beautiful spidery tiny little marks they're they're absolutely gorgeous they're very organic you wouldn't be able to create that with a paintbrush. Um, it's a beautiful effect. And if I hold the painting up, you can already see on this left hand side that it's beginning to work. We've got this lovely texture happening. 
Okay, so now we have to let this dry totally before moving on to the next step. So while it's beginning to dry, I'm just taking my brush with some brown paint on it and coming to the edge of where the curve meets the petals and I'm just sort of distressing that edge because it's not a smooth curve. If I look on the reference photo, it's not a smooth curve, it's not a hard line, it's a, it's a sort of a distressed line edge. So I'm just pulling some of that brown out up into the petal a um, little bit and that makes it much more naturalistic. Um, so I'm just dragging some of that brown out and into the petals a little bit. Okay, um, and then you can do the same thing on the left hand side, just a tiny bit in that corner here. And now I will entirely let this dry before we move on. Just a quick pause folks. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate having you. I hope you're enjoying the video. If you are, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more content. If you click the bell icon as well, you'll actually receive a notification every time I upload a new video. So, Watercolour Wednesdays are all about learning techniques for beginners, step-by-step -step instructions, free downloadable um, information sheets. There's lots of information below this video. If you have a look in the description box, you'll find links to lots of other videos. They're all beginner friendly. And I think that's about all I wanted to say. So let's get back to today's class. Once you're happy that it's completely dry, you want to just gently rub the um, salt from the surface. So I usually tilt my board at a slight angle and then gently just tap the salt and gentle rub from the surface. If there are any patches that are slightly damp, what will happen is you'll smudge the paint a little bit. So do try and be careful of that. Um, So this bottom corner was slightly damp still. <clears throat> and I'm going to leave the left hand side because I know that that's still not quite dry enough for me to remove the salt. So I'm going to leave that in place while I paint the B. So just get rid of that salt. There we go. And um, can you see there? Yes, that's good. Right, so the next thing to tackle is the bee itself. I'm just gonna make sure there aren't any grains of salt that have jumped onto my bee. Because obviously as it hits the paper, it bounces, doesn't it? Some of the grains may have landed on the bee instead of on the flower. So just making sure there's no salt there because if there is, and I paint across it, the salt will then have this kind of textural effect and I don't want that on my bumblebee. So what we're going to do first of all is work on the yellow bands across the bee's body. So we have a band at the front here and a band just behind his wings across his back. So um, we're going to use the cadmium yellow to create those areas. So just popping some of the cadmium yellow back onto my palette. There we go. And I'm going to paint this um, onto damp paper. So just taking a small brush and wetting the area just as we did before a little bit of water and what that will do is those edges will be a little bit fuzzy 
and it's going to work in our advantage because obviously it's a, a fluffy hairy bee. So I'm just going to fill in that section. And because I've wet the paper, it gives me a little bit of time to get the paint down without getting any hard lines across that patch of paint. And as I come down, I'm gonna just dab across the edge, a bit like I did here to distress that edge. I'm going to do the same thing at the edges of the shape. So just tapping a little bit of yellow into what will be the the darker black sort of Payne's grey bands on the bee. <clears throat> and I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the first band round his head. So a little bit of water down. Oops, a bit too much. Take some off there. So it just if we if we were to paint onto the dry paper, you'll just find that especially as a beginner it takes you a little bit of time to cover that area and if you're in a warm room like I am the paint will begin to dry and you'll end up with little hard lines where you know paint started to dry and you haven't quite filled in the shape so make it easier for yourself just wet the surface slightly and then fill in with the paint just gives you that extra time to work in the area without getting those hard lines through your wash. So I'm just dabbing that in and again working on the edges just, just to distress the edge a little bit, getting some spiky little lines at the edges. Okay, so if I hold that up for you, you can see that there are little spiky edges to those shapes. Okay, so the next thing to do is to mix up, so his bottom here, the very last band, is actually white fur, white hair, and so we're going to use the white of the paper, but also pop down some of these shadows. So you can see that there's sort of a dark section here. And we're going to use the pale Payne's grey just to put in those sort of little fine details of hair. So let's do that next. So I'm going to just add a bit of Payne's grey to my palette. Nice and light. If I just do a little test on here. It is nice and light and I'm going to do this on the dry paper because I want nice sharp lines and this is with my number two brush. I'm just going to use the very tip of my brush to create some little hairy strokes in that area and have them sort of crisscrossing a little bit. What you don't want to do is just do that. If you do that, it just looks like a stripy pattern. If you begin to sort of crisscross a little and have some of them touching um, and that kind of thing, it actually begins to look more like hair or fur. Okay, so just using the tip of your brush, if you press down too hard, you'll get a wide line. But if you're very careful and you use your little finger to rest your hand, you get much more control and you can create lovely fine lines that way. So if you observe from your reference image, you just there's this lovely patch of darker hair around this section. So you just want to create a few fine little lines there. Um, and it gives you that effect. And I'm actually going to come up into the darker band which is above it there we go okay perhaps put a few just all along the edges as well just to define that shape a little bit okay so that's the 
bottom band if you like so the next one up is obviously um a very dark Payne's grey so we have the band at the very front of his head the main sort of circular area of his head and then this middle band on his his body and across his back um so we want to mix up more Payne's grey but this time it needs to be a lot darker in colour so using more paint got a little hair on my brush there um, using more paint in the water and you'll get a darker mix so this time you can see there that's darker it will dry lighter though so I'm going to actually make it a little darker than that and also I'm wetting the paper first so again that waters the colour down so actually I've created that kind of strength of grey so quite dark okay so um, using one of my larger slightly larger brushes this one is what is it number eight I'm going to wet let's start actually starting at the front so that I don't smudge my work just damping that area down and then with my small brush I'm coming in with first of all little lines on that edge little hair lines on that edge so that goes into the yellow that I've already painted down in the petals and then filling in that shape and allowing some of the grey to come into the yellow of his first yellow band there as well so it creates this fuzziness again um, just show you that there okay so I've I've basically used the tip of my brush to make little hair marks and the same here into that yellow band so I'm going to do exactly the same in the next section so I will paint little marks like this sort of cutting into that yellow that I'd painted originally cutting into there first and then I'll fill in that shape so I just need to wet the area with my brush just to give myself time to fill it in so I'm going to paint in between the um, wings this time and down to the next band of yellow so if I just wet that whole section <clears throat> okay so taking my small I've still got my small brushes the number two um, because it allows me to paint the sort of the finer hairy sections at the edges and then filling in obviously with the smaller brushes you have to keep going back to the palette and picking up more paint because of course it doesn't hold as much paint um, so that is one downside to using the smaller brushes um, however it gives you control as to where the paint's going and it allows you to paint more finer details of course so that's where the wings finish now I'm just going to come in and fill out this section need <clears throat> so you can see it's nice and soft because I've pre-wet the paper so it's giving me these fuzzy fuzzy shapes and that enables us to sort of emulate that kind of hair the fuzzy bee so I'm just picking up a bit more grey there because I've not quite mixed enough and actually this is beginning to dry so I'm just going to wet this section again bit of water up to that edge 
there so a bit of water down and then picking up more grey so that edge there and this edge here where it meets the wings at the sides that's a very sharp line so if you get that detail in first get that nice sharp line in first and then dabbing in with the brush so you can leave some white of the paper showing through because of course that shows you the sort of that fluffy effect you get that nice soft fluffiness um, let's pick up some more Payne's grey and back here remember we're going to distress that edge a little bit put some little hairy marks into going into the yellow a little bit just overlapping a touch and then filling in that shape okay so it's still slightly damp so I'm going to build up more paint I'm just going back in with some more grey and this will um, enhance the texture if you like we will get dark patches and light patches and again that's going to help with the effect the fluffy effect so while it's still slightly damp you can do that now you can see at the front here it's dried off a little bit so I've got some hard lines so I'm just going to go in with a bit of water soften that off and back with a bit of paint okay and we're nearly there um, just popping down a bit more so this is still damp at the back here so I'm able to come in Um, ha paint happily knowing that the shapes that I put down will be softened because it's nice damp paper and I think that's dark enough now across that section so I'm going to move down and do this final section here so exactly the same I'll speed this up for you and I'll join you again in a second So next I'm going to paint in the feet, well the legs should I say. So we've got um, two little shapes either side of the wings at the top there. And then we've got one leg here and one leg here. So that's what we'll paint in next. And also the antenna at the front. So the same thing again, it's with this Payne's Grey, keeping it nice and simple. And... Um, we want a similar depth of colour as we have across the body. So just mixing up a little bit more paint there that I need. And the thing again is that of course the um, legs and everything, they have hair all across them. So they're nice and fuzzy. I'm going to use a smaller brush, my number four brush, to pre-wet the legs this time. So using a bit of a smaller brush gives me control for this these smaller shapes okay um, and then I'm going to paint the antenna turn your board around to make it easier for yourself it's a very little shape at the front here and I'm painting it onto dry paper so I've got lots of control and not putting down too much pressure so that I've only using the tip of the brush to fill in that really small shape the antennae there at the top um okay so that's looking good so the next thing really is to think about the wings now we're going to have to think about this in layers so the wings of course are transparent well transparent you can see through them but they're not completely transparent in the in the image um, there are some reflections obviously on there and the color that you can see through the ring the wing is different to the actual color 
um, of the object behind it. So they're not entirely transparent. So what we're going to try and do is emulate what we can see here. We're not going to get it perfect, but this is a watercolour painting. It's not meant to be perfect. It's our version of this photograph. So to simplify things, as we are beginners, um, we're going to put down some yellow, first of all, um, on the wings. And then we're going to be using some Payne's Grey to bring in some of these lovely detailed lines. So let's mix up a colour first of all. Now the colour is um, a sort of a, a mucky yellow. So we're going to use the cadmium yellow, but I'm going to put a touch of... I've got a bit of green left on my palette. So I'm adding some of that green to this yellow. So effectively a very yellow green colour. So if I put this next to the cadmium yellow as I used it originally, you can just see that it's a slightly muckier version of that cadmium yellow and that's what I'm going to use. Um, so let's have a look. We'll start with the top wing here. Now I realise there are some light reflections on them. What we'll do is we'll lift those off at the end. So to begin with, what we're going to do is paint the entire wing. So let's wet it first. And remember, this is just the first layer. Um, you have to kind of plan ahead with watercolour painting and work out the best way to tackle the subject. So we're going to paint a nice wash of this colour. I'm going to water it down a little bit. I've just added some more water to my brush to water it down. You can see it's not the same as the background. The background's a very bright orange. That was, sorry, yellow. <laughs> that was the lemon yellow that we used. This is the cadmium yellow with a touch of the green. So it's this kind of mucky colour. Um, but that is quite close to what we can see on the picture. Okay, so we've got a nice light wash of that colour there. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the second wing. Okay, and that has to completely dry before we can paint over the top because if it's slightly damp, any detailed lines that we paint will blend and merge and we'll end up with a soft line. Well, in actual fact, we don't want to be working with soft lines anymore. We want nice crisp lines, so therefore we need to be working on dry paper. So we need to allow this to dry before doing the next step. While those wings are drying, I just noticed that the bottom end of the bee, the bum end, um, it's got a very hard line. So we need to just um, break that line up a little bit. So I'm going to use um, a little bit of the brown on my brush. So I've watered it down, it's nice and pale, but I want to break up this line. So I'm just dabbing into it, a bit like we did with the, you know, the edges of the rest of it, but this time I need to use the colours that are surrounding the bee, and so I need to use this yellow and this brown. So I'm just cutting into that white shape with some of that brown paint there. Um, I might bring some brown around here as well. Now I'm just going to pick up some of the cadmium yellow. There we go. Obviously that had a little bit of the brown in, so it's a nice dark cadmium yellow. And the same again, just sort of painting that into the background, cutting into through the white little lines and it, in actual fact, if we look at the reference image, there's also a shadow here that we haven't painted in. Well, we can do that now. Um, let's pick up a little bit of the Payne's Grey. Okay, and it's nice and wet, nice and pale. Oops, let's get some more water. So it's nice and pale, and I'm just going to paint that in 
it goes down the back of his leg there I'm painting it on dry paper and it comes around and actually it comes all the way around his his bottom really and I'm just going to clean my brush off use some clean water just to blend in those edges so I'm touching the edges of that grey now because it's still slightly damp and I'm blending it into the background with the clean water okay um, there we go so now I have a cast shadow um, that runs down his leg um, and under his bottom there and yeah I think that works quite nicely it makes it stops it looking quite so flat and also we've cut into his um, white furry section and that's worked nicely too and while I've done that the wings have been drying so I can continue now with the next step on the wings this one's still slightly cool to the touch so it is damp um, so I'm going to paint onto the top wing first. Now this is where you need to use your observation skills, folks. And we're just going to put in some lovely lines. It doesn't need to be exactly like we see here. If you're concerned and um, worried about this, um, you could trace these lines over the top. So what I would do is allow this to be totally dry then I'd lay my picture back on top and trace those lines through. So that would give you a guide. I'm just going to use my very small brush, which is a number two, into the grey that I've just been using for the shadow, actually. And um, we have a lovely strong line running along the edge of his wing. So I'm just doing little strokes, hardly any pressure down, so I've got a nice fine line and that runs along that edge of the wing. And then we have a couple of other, we've got a line that comes down and then that kind of forks off in several directions. If you use a, a broken line, it works really nicely. Um, if you use a solid line then it, it's going to look very harsh um, but using a broken line works better. It's a very delicate wing of course and there's a lot of reflections on there and if you just pop in, you don't need to pop in all of the lines like I say um, Just get creating that feel, that sense of structure, if you like, that's on the wing. There we go. So we've got that. And um, there are some sort of darker shadow lines. So I'm just going to use the same colour. Uh, sorry, that was the wrong colour. So this kind of this mucky green that we mixed originally for the wing. I'm going to use that now to paint in a second layer of that colour, which effectively is a glaze and it will make it darker. And I'm just going to pop that down in the areas that I can see kind of shadows, those stronger colours. Um, and they're still using my number two brush and they kind of come down and around this section you get this lovely sense now of that the wing is there it's got a structure to it and of course we've got some reflections as well um, so to get the reflections, the reflections are sort of more on this side of the paint of the wing. Um, that's it. So that's enough of a shadow. Now to do the lifting technique, you want a flat brush. So I have a piece of paper towel at the ready, and here's my flat brush. It's quite firm. 
and I'm just going to attempt to lift off some sections of paint. Now it's a very pale wash that we have down there anyway, so it might not be very visible if I'm honest, because it's it's not going to show up against the pale colour, but we'll give it a go. Um, it is lifting. Alternatively, um, you might want to use a little bit of white gouache. That would work nicely. Um, or you could use a little bit of masking fluid before you start painting. That's an option. Um, but what you need to do is rub away at the surface and you will get these sort of lighter sections and dab that paint away. Um, it's very, very subtle and you probably won't pick it up on the camera. Let me just see um, if I can show you that. So there is very, very subtle, folks. A bit of white gouache would be much more effective. But um, we'll continue on. I'm going to now paint the second wing and I'll speed it up so that um, this video isn't too long for you guys. So um, I've added the detail that I wanted to on his wings and it's looking much better. Um, I just want to add a little further detail on the yellow stripes on, across his body. So for that, I'm just going to show you, um, I'm going to go in with some really thick yellow. So that's very, very thick on my small number two brush. Um, sort of almost opaque consistency of paint and I'm just going to paint in some little lines a bit like we did down the bottom on the white section um, and this is just going to create that lovely hair like texture because at the moment it was looking quite flat so this is going to help give us that for the hairiness, the feel of, of fluffy hair across his, across his body. And just build those lines up. And again, remember, don't, don't make them look too stripy. We don't want this. We want them to sort of overlap, uh, just as we did before. But that looks so much better than that section there. It just cut, brings it to life. So exactly the same again on the front section, just straight into the paint, nice thick on the tip of your brush. Follow the direction, the shape of his head as well. So it does this, it creates an arc. The hairs come out at these different angles going around the shape. Um, so a bit like a clock face. Okay, so if you keep them going in that kind of direction, you're not going to go far wrong. So I'm just layering that up and it's just enough of a contrast to the original colour we had down there we go excellent so finally the last thing I want to do is just to bring in some shadow across the background here and we're going to use the um, burnt sienna for that so just reactivating the burnt sienna that I've already got down here in my palette, a bit of water. And um, I want to do this on damp paper so that the lines are softened off. So what I'm going to do is just spread some clean water from the edge of the centre working my way out just in the same directions as the petals so in that kind of um a bit like a sunshine if you were to do a sunshine you know as a child we used to paint the sun didn't we um so um then just in with this pale brown nice loose watery mix very very watery and into this damp 
uh, onto the damp surface and just dragging some of that out following the directions of the original brush strokes that you created for those petals and keeping it nice and loose don't be too tense about it um, and just filling in the bottom here with some more of that paint and that'll just bleed up from this center outwards and it just creates a lovely softened sort of shadow cast across that shape um, this is still slightly damp so it should be okay coming down here yep still damp enough to work on and it just gives us that extra little bit of detail stops the painting from looking flat there we go but it's still nice and loose you know that's only taken me what a couple of minutes um so it's still very loose keeping things nice and and loose and free and that's transformed that that's much much better much happier with that just pop a bit of water on that section it wasn't damp i don't think so just dampening that down there we go, I think that's probably enough. So thanks again for joining me today. I hope your bee paintings are wonderful and I'd love to see them. You can subscribe to my Facebook page and I have um, a group that's in there specifically for um, people that watch my content on YouTube and also those of you that join me in my in-person classes as well. So you can find me on Facebook, it's Rebecca Jarman Artist. I'd love to see you. So if you've joined, really enjoyed this video, um, check out this next one that I'm linking above. Um, it's a watercolour zebra. I think you'll find that one really nice to paint. Take care and I'll see you next week for another Watercolour Wednesday.